So we're going to move on and invite the next group of um, distinguished speakers to join me up on the dais as our panelists take their place down below. Um, remember, we started at the global level and began the drill down uh, to a sector, uh, to a country, and to three big issues. And now we're going to hear uh, how each of our activist panelists is advancing uh, gender equality affecting real people's lives and what role implementing the WEPS plays in their efforts. So if I could request Priya, Arancha, and Hiroko to please come up. Uh, since the stories of WEPS uh, stakeholders in action are too good to miss, we have tightened um, this segment a whole lot this time, and we're going to use a different kind of shorthand. So each will share what they do and why, one accomplishment and one forward-looking goal uh, that includes scaling up or building a broader partnership. Their remarkable bios are in the uh, WEPS app, and um, I'm sure that some of you may have already downloaded it and read uh, their fantastic journeys. So I hope that everybody understands the rules. Um, we'll move and begin with... Uh... I think you've got the wrong name up here, but come up. There, yeah, but just stay here. Just stay here. Yes, sure. I think we've got a little change in the names. Um, Miss Ope Wemi Jones is not here, but uh, Miss Hiroko is here. Um, so we'll start with uh, Priya. Priya dedicated uh, her life to making women's health and maternity uh, safe and dignified, particularly for those living in extreme poverty. Uh, as executive director, she now runs Merck for Mothers. So Priya, it's all yours. Thank you very much. And I don't switch on the microphone. Not sure if the slides will be up, uh, but I'd like to use um, a success story that hopefully showcases why sustainable development is actually important for all, but also why business needs to be at the table. So I'm going to take you to Senegal, a uh, French-speaking Muslim-majority country in West Africa, where we supported the government of Senegal with various partners to increase access to family planning. Why? Because it's one of the most cost-effective ways to actually lower maternal mortality rates. And it's also a critical multiplier for development. Everyone on the panel before spoke about parental leave and once pregnancy started. But there are multiple countries that were on that McKinsey map where women don't actually have the choice as to when they have their children. And that is also keeping them away from the workplace. So three years ago, more than 85% of health facilities across Senegal experience stockouts of family planning products. What does that mean? That means when a woman gets to a health facility, overcomes all the barriers in many of these countries to get there, eight to nine times out of 10, she is returning empty handed. So what did we do? Well, we called it a supply chain innovation, but it's based on commercial sector principles and Merck probably doesn't consider it innovation at all. It's about outsourcing uh, supply chain to private sector distributors that integrate into the public health supply chain. By the way, no OECD country has a public run supply chain. Second, it uses performance based incentives, not new to private sector, and it uses real time data to ensure accurate forecasting, none of which is innovative to the commercial sector. What was the success? In two years, nationwide scale up of the program, total stockouts reduced to less than 2%, improved family planning access for 3.2 million women, and a CPR rate, i.e. our people using family planning, that had stagnated below 10% for 50 years was increased. But really, what does it mean? It means impact on the lives and opportunities for women and men, because men also need family planning, to plan their pregnancies, work, and power the economy. So what's the forward-looking goal? Well, we've already scaled across Senegal, and they're now transitioning, but the Minister of Health wants to use this for all 118 products, so we're helping with that, and spreading to neighboring countries that now want to access this supply chain innovation. But ultimately, this was not really about contraceptives. It was not really about supply chain or access to health. 
It was really about our strategy around choice, voice, and stock shelves, supporting women's empowerment, that power economies, and that is good for all of us. Thank you very much, uh, Priya. I know that we have a lot of questions um, that were generated in the, in the previous um, uh, session, and I know that this one also will generate a lot of questions, but I'd like you to just hold on um, as we get our other panelists to share uh, their thoughts. Uh, Aranchas Gonzalez uh, is ready to go and share how the International Trade Center advocates uh, for the web's principle number five and builds uh, so many relationships with women entrepreneurs. Uh, so, Aranchas, your perspective? Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, the International Trade Center, the joint agency of the United Nations and the World Trade Organization, focuses on empowerment principle number five, which speaks of enterprise development, supply chain, and marketing practices that empower women. In a nutshell, what we care about is women's economic empowerment. We want to make sure that we use the power of women entrepreneurs, the thousands, the millions of micro, small, and medium enterprises that can use trade as a powerful lever uh, to create jobs, to grow, uh, to help us in economic resilience and transformation. So we know that there is a consistently positive correlation between countries that provide greater economic opportunities for women and higher competitiveness and higher national income. We know that when companies, when these millions of SMEs trade, we know they are more productive, we know they are more competitive, and we know they pay better wages. But guess what? Our recent research tells us that only one in five exporting companies are women-owned exporting companies. One in five. The second thing that we have found out as, is that these companies often face gender-based barriers to trade, trade policies that are not gender neutral. In many countries, we have heard today, discrimination is written even into the law. So we are perpetuating this discrimination, but more importantly, we are foregoing a powerful source of growth, inclusive growth. Now, this is why the International Trade Center, and here comes uh, our, uh, let's say, uh, idea to uh, support women's economic empowerment, partnered with other international organizations, with the UN Global Compact, uh, with uh, uh, Lise, and thank you for your leadership on that, with UN Women, with businesses, with associations of women in business and civil actors to launch the She Trades Initiative. Hashtag She Trades. What is it? A global call to action to connect one million women entrepreneurs to markets by 2020. Eight areas of work which we hope the high-level panel is going to look into. Trade policies, data, public procurement, corporate procurement, financial inclusion, certification of ownership, ownership and control of assets and supply side. Three. A mobile and a web application to provide women entrepreneurs across the globe with a platform to connect. They can go into this she trade that you can download on your mobile phones. They can register and we will make them visible to the market. We will help them connect with buyers. We will help them connect with each other and with you in this room. So I'm here to seek your support for the she trades initiative. I uh, want all of you to become ambassadors for She Trades. I want you all to join in this call to action. All you have to do is commit to work in any of these eight areas to connect uh, women to markets. Our first uh, stock, taking stock on this initiative will happen in Turkey, in Istanbul, uh, where we will be together with Kagider, the Women in Business Association of Turkey, hosting our next <laughs> Women Vendors Exhibition, 1st to 2nd September, Come join in the call to action and tell us what you are doing uh, to put more women connected to markets. Thank you. Thank you, Aranches. Uh, to finish connecting the dots here, uh, we welcome 
Hiroko Hashimoto, uh, representative of Japan to CSW60. Uh, Japan's falling population and relatively no, uh, low numbers of women in the workforce uh, continue to pose challenges. Uh, how do you see meeting these and how is this experience informing the government's perspective on the WEPs uh, and our new international goals? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to talk about issues and activities related to WEPs in Japan. Although Japan's rank in at the G Gender Gap Index of World Economic Forum in 2015 is 101 among 145 countries, and also Japan's economic Women's Economic Opportunity Index is worse than that, 106 of one, among 145 countries. But the number of companies in Japan which signed WEPs is 214. Japan is a leading country with regard to the number of signatory countries. The main reason behind this fact is several core people and Japan's national machinery for promoting gender equality worked hard to invite companies to sign WEPs. Ms. Yamaguchi, who contributed to invite previous UN Women Japan liaison office, persuaded local companies to sign WEPs. As a result, Japan became the leading country with regard to the number of companies signed WEPs. Ms. Iwata, I hope she is here, who was the vice president of Shiseido, Japan's re the top cosmetic company, and also the vice president of Japan National Committee for UN Women, took initiative for Shiseido to sign WEPs and invited and persuaded other leading companies in Japan to sign WEPs. She was influential to her male colleagues working for gender equality at the National Machinery for advise, National Machinery's Advisory Committee. Japan National Committee for UN Women, Global Compact Network Japan, and BPW Japan, National Federation of Business and Professional Women's Club of Japan formed WEPS liaison group to cooperate each other to organize events and other activities. Thanks to Mr. Abe, who is the first prime minister placed the highest priority in promoting women's participation in society officially. The act on promotion of women's participation and advancement in the workplace was adopted by parliament in last year, will be enforced 1st April 2016. Under the law, private companies and public offices with more than 300 workers and public offices have to formulate a plan of action to promote women's participation and advancement. In order to accelerate implementation of the law, databases of co companies promoting women's participation and advancement has been created. Some leading companies signed WEPs have started to formulate the action plan before laws en enactment in order to activate women's power to respective companies. So maybe I have in Japan, one of the current maybe main labor issues is improvement of working conditions, treatment of non regular workers, in addition to increasing female ratio of managers. The number of non regular workers has increased regular, gradually at both private and private, sec private sectors, public sectors. According to the result of basic survey, nearly 60% of female workers were non regular workers. Hiring non-regular workers have increased to save the personal cost of the respective employers and to meet the request from one female workers who do not work, like to work longer hours as regular workers in order to deal with domestic chores, care works of children and elderly, community activities and other work. And maybe later, I elaborate other things. So maybe I had better to uh, finish my presentation. Yes. But that's, um, yeah, yeah, that is better. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Hiroko. Uh, I just quickly ask. 
Um, we are constrained for time, uh, and so I just quickly ask uh, Priya to uh, share if you've got any call for action uh, point that you'd like to share quickly, please. Yeah, absolutely. So again, I want to go back to the point of family planning, which in some countries and in some political environments is a thorny issue. But please, I want to remind people, and I think this is a real call to action for the private sector and businesses in this room and outside, that if women continue to be vessels for birthing only, they cannot enter the workforce. They need to be able to choose when they have their children, as do their partners, so they can really stay in the workforce and contribute to our economy. So this is a real call to action for the private sector, especially the MNCs out there. Do you know what your subsidiaries in your multiple countries across the world are ensuring to access um, ensuring access to modern contraceptives. I looked within Merck, our policies were not the same across all our 200 subsidiaries. So by doing an external program, we have actually improved access internally as well. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Priya. Uh, thank you for being such drivers and doers. Um, I'm, I'm just amazed at the number of women's lives and livelihoods that are affected by uh, our three super doers and by you all.